Hey guys, welcome back to another video. You ever have that moment where you're questioning yourself and you're thinking about what's going on and you're feeling crazy because it just doesn't seem to make sense? Well, you might be in a relationship with a toxic person. That's what this video is going to be about. I was chatting with Debbie the other day and we were we were talking about the the nuances of uh, some of the bizarre behavior that these people will do. And it's kind of covert, right? It's like, it's not really in your face. It's not, it's not like it's, uh, you know, they're not coming up to you and going, hey, you know, I'm getting ready to basically mess with your mind. Sit back and enjoy the ride. No, unfortunately, that isn't what happens. It's a little bit more subdued. It's always, you know, kind of veiled in being nice or doing something friendly or, or just looking out for you. And if you question it or you say anything, then they can look at you with those doe eyes. Doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. And be like, what, why, why would you think that? And, I mean, when you're in the relationship with them, it's just a screw with your head, that cognitive dissonance, the gaslighting, all that stuff that just makes you feel like, like, what the F is going on? You know, the hard part about all that is when you're going through it, you don't, you don't know what's real. And you start really questioning whether you're deciphering the signs appropriately or maybe not. And this can, manif this can manifest itself in so many different ways. I've experienced it with, back in the old days, you know, if we were joking around, having a good conversation and, you know, telling a joke or something or a story and, you feel like they're really involved in listening and then they're like, you know, hey, you uh you have something in your teeth, right? You know, and you feel all feel all uh you know, kind of just kills the mood, right? It makes you feel like, whoa, 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 crap, you know, you're all embarrassed or whatever. And it what what the crazy part about it is is if you question them on anything, you know, it'll be like, Well, I was just trying to help. I was just trying to be nice. If you don't want me to be nice, I, I guess I won't be. <laughs> you know, or or I was talking to, I don't remember who I was talking to about this. Maybe it was a friend of mine. I don't remember. But this is a common thing too, right? Especially when the early stages, the early days, the early days of, uh, of this BS, meaning, you know, like whenever the relationship ends. And they'll be like, oh, um, I have little Johnny and, you know, if you'd like to see them, you know, over the holidays during my time, just let me know. But, but if you don't care, if you don't care about them and you, and you, and you don't want to see them, then I guess that's okay. <laughs> you know, it's funny when this friend of mine was talking about that, I remember a few incidents like that. It was like, it's always this black and white. And it's like, well, if you don't do exactly what I want, then I guess you're a demon. <laughs> you know, and then you feel like you have to argue with these people. And, and here's the thing. You don't. You don't. You don't have to engage with them. Don't even, you know, if they say, would you like to see, you know, so-and-so, uh, then if you the answer is yes, fine. If the answer is, oh, gr that would be awesome and I can do it on this date or this date. Or I, I remember this scenario in this particular situation. It was, uh, you know, well, you could have them for a couple hours. And it's like, well, no, my I will have a tradition that I, you know, that we go to the bookstore, we get a book, we go see a movie, we do these things, you know, and if we, you give me, you know, breadcrumbs, I don't have enough time. And then they'll immediately go to the, oh, well, I guess you just don't care. Oh, it's so sad you just don't want to see your child. 
You know, and, and when you're going through this, you feel like you're losing your mind because you're like, what the, f no, that's not what I'm saying. You know, it's like you're, you're mixing, you're mixing the woods. You're trying to make it sound like something different. Guys, here's the thing, man. When you are going through this, they're going to play these stupid games. You know, it'll be that. It will be, mine used to, do, and, and actually even did this for the Christmas break, you know, sending food over. And you can't say anything, right? Because if you're like, hey, don't do that. Oh, oh, oh. You know, it's that, that like, you know, hurt little wounded, wounded butterfly. I want God forbid you say it or, you know, say something to the kids because the kids will be like, well, I wanted to, you know, I wanted it. It was my idea. You know, I've had that happen a few times. And, uh, which I mean, I get it, right? I mean, if that, and, and the problem is you can't ask the question. Uh, and, and for instance, I'll, I'll, I could give you another example. Uh, you know, the kids were basically with me for the, it was my year for the, for the Christmas break. So the way our order reads is whoever doesn't have the break gets the kids for a few hours, four hours or so on Christmas day. And uh, they were getting ready to leave. And my middle daughter was like, oh, we need to go by and get milk. And I'm like, uh, like nothing is open. You know, I mean, you know, <laughs> you, know you kind of probably should have done that yesterday. And I had some milk left and I was like, all right, we'll take it. Right. And the, the only reason I was doing that is because it was important. You know, my, my, my child was bringing it up and I'm like, well, hey, you know, I don't care, you know, take this. And then stuff came back when they came back late, by the way. But, uh, but you can't say anything, right? I mean, because if you say, like, like if I would have said something, it's like, hey, I don't, you know, please don't send that over. Then it's, gonna, it's a double bind. So you just got to pick the best, the best position. Let me try that again. The best possible outcome for you under the crappy situations, crappy circumstances. And it's important to remember this because it's so easy to get caught up in the tit for tat and the responding and, and, you know, all the stuff I talk about not doing in my hybrid no contact video. I'll try to put a card up if I can remember. You know, the reality is, is you, you just have to choose. You have to choose your, your battles wisely. You have to really think through it. And the second part is, is you got to not get caught up in trying to figure out what the hell they're doing. Why are they sending food over? Why did they do this? Why did they do that? You know, um, it's it, the example I was using before with the whole, you know, oh, you don't care about the kids thing. You know, that's just, that is so freaking common, but it's, it's more or more over it's it's the ones that are tough are um, it, the ones that are tough are the ones where you you really question yourself on the motivation but, but but here rolling back to what i was saying just saying is don't waste your time on it you know just go back referencing another old video the uh, absolute thinking just remind yourself that you're dealing with somebody who's highly toxic maybe they're you know MPD or would be classified or if appropriately, appropriately diagnosed, would be diagnosed with something, whatever it is, remind yourself of what you're dealing with so that you don't forget and that you can stop getting caught up in that thing of thinking about it. I mean, for instance, so take for instance, the food, right? Now, I don't even want to think about it that much because what you, you really need to get to the point, well, what I'm trying to say is you need to get to the point that it's not an issue and you're just like, whatever. But when you're not at that mode and you're like, well, what is, why are they doing that? You know, I don't, you know, you can be like, well, are they trying to be nice? Is this an olive branch? Is this to try to, is this to try to change the dynamic? No. <laughs> and so try to change the dynamic to suck you back in so they can go back to their normal, interesting ways you don't just know you you say when it comes over it's like yep that's exactly the crazy behavior that they would do 
you know you don't want it it's no it's not appropriate saying something you know they're they're trying to provoke a reaction and when you realize that you can take a tremendous amount of power back whenever you re, when you know that that's what's going on and that, uh, my 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 i guess my final thought my final thought on this is is this when you realize that they are trying to provoke a reaction, whatever it is, you getting angry, you pushing back, you being nice about it, you doing, you somehow responding is going to give them narcissistic supply and just perpetuate this. You have to, you basically have to just not respond. You don't say thank you. You don't, you don't acknowledge it. You just, you just, you leave it. And if it's the kids doing it or in the appearance of them doing it, you know, you don't want it. You just, just be benign about it. You know, don't, don't throw a, throw a fit about it. Don't make a big deal about it. There have been times whenever uh, the, the, the kids would do something like that, you know, they'll bring something over. Oh, mommy made this. And I'm just like, Oh dear God, I'd rather throw it in the trash and, you know, just get it out of the house. I can't remember what it was. It was few, maybe it was last year or something. And, and I just said, oh, okay. And I just, you know, tried it and, oh, wow. You know, made the kid, you know, made the particular child that did all this, you know, feel good. And, and you just, you just, you're stuck in this mode where you're picking the best of bad, bad decisions. It's double binds. There's no good decision, right? So. My, my underlying point on this is when you realize that a reaction is what they're looking for, it makes it so much easier to not react because it feels empowering. It feels like, like you know, you know what they're trying to do. They're trying to push you to do something. And then when you can recognize that and say, oh my God, this is what they're trying to do. I'm not going to do that. It really empowers you and gives you a lot of strength. At least it did for me. If anyone else is watching this and you're thinking about this, I'd like to know what you think too. I mean, does this idea of realizing the provocation is what they're trying to get you to do and the fact that you don't do it makes you feel like, hey, I just, you know, I'm winning this fight or whatever you know, or this particular battle because they're trying to push me to do something and I'm not trying to do it. Now, conversely, if they're, you know, I mean, people can manipulate people all kinds of ways, you know, and you can also do something to where you try to manipulate someone to, to make it, make a decision that's good for you. <clears throat> you know, whatever. Anyways, that's my thought. That's what I wanted to chat with you about today. I'm really curious what you think. Uh, this thing comes up a lot. I'm sure, I'm sure most of you have either experienced what I'm talking about in this video, or you're probably going through it right now, more than likely. Don't give them the reaction. Don't give it. Don't, don't do it. All right. I'll catch you on the next video.